Good morning, everyone. Welcome to St. Bartholomew's Church. I am relieved and excited to be back and to be worshiping with you today. So wherever you are this morning, thank you for coming and joining us. I just want to mention a few things if you take a peek at the, what's happening. So it's the back of your bulletin. As always, I want to say this out loud. Read, people, read, okay? There's the Apostle, our monthly newsletter that tells you all kinds of things. There's the What's Happening that tells you all kinds of things. There are letters that come out occasionally. There are emails and texts. Please read so that you know what we are doing, which is pretty remarkable. And if you are not getting stuff, no matter where you live and you want to, call the church. The number is at the back of the bulletin today. Leave your name and number, and Maggie Caldwell will call you and get you set up. So please take a chance to read, in large measure also, because you should be receiving a letter from me this week explaining our forward path regarding worship. So I hope you'll take some time to read that as well. In particular, for today, I want to remind everybody that, as always, we will be doing this wonderful agape meal, this meal that the early church shared. So I want to make sure that if you haven't, you've put aside a, something to eat and something to drink, whatever that might be. And also today, we're going to have a fairly robust blessing back to school. So if that's something that's important to you, I hope you'll have a symbol of that um, opportunity for you today with you so that as we bless those of you who are engaged in going back to school, that you'll have that with you. I also want to mention that in the bulletin, or in, the, in the what's happening today, there's wonderful information about the flea market. And in particular, this coming Wednesday, that the flea market will open from 5 to 7 for St. B's family and friends. And what I want to say to you is that the flea market team has been doing an unbelievable job of ensuring our ability to have it, but also to make sure that it will be stunningly safe. So take a look at what's happening in the, about the flea market. I also want to quickly mention that there's a uh, piece here also about voting, so I hope you'll take a look at that. Um, there's also some uh, flyers about that. And then I want to mention that this coming Friday at 5.30, on 9-11, we will be on the lawn across the street at Hunting Ridge Presbyterian Church to do some prayers for our neighborhood and our community. And if you'd like to come, please, please feel free to join us. It will be outside, unless, of course, it rains, in which case we won't be doing it at all. And then finally, I just want to quickly mention that as we move into this weekend and we move into Labor Day, as we come to our prayers of the people today, I hope that you will hold in your prayers those who labor those who make our world the amazing place that it is, and those who just have that gift of being able to do that. But I also hope you'll hold in your prayers those who have been, um, who've had that opportunity taken away from them this year. So in particular, as we come to Labor Day and we celebrate that, I hope that you will um, find a way to just keep that in your prayers both today and tomorrow. And now, let's, let's continue with our worship as we sing our opening hymn, Joyful, Joyful, we adore you. Thank you. 
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now and forever. Amen. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, to trust in you with all our hearts, for as you always resist the proud who confide in their own strength, so you never forsake those who make their boast of your mercy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Ezekiel. You mortal, I have, not, I have made a sentinel of the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O oh, wicked ones, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from their ways. The wicked shall die in their iniquity, but their blood and but their blood I will require at your hands. If you warn the wicked to turn from their ways, and they do not turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but you will have saved your lives. Now you, mortal, say to the house of Israel, thus you have said, our transgressions and our sins weigh upon us, and we waste away because of them. How then can we live? Say to them, as I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from their ways and live. Turn back, turn back from your evil ways, for why will you die, O house of Israel? Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people.
reading from Romans. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore, love is fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than the day when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, if another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly, I tell you, Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, 
it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. Okay, so I've either been away too long or I just can't wait to preach. So, in the name of God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. We are wasting away, they cry out. We are wasting away. The people of God are crying out. And with some good reason. The nation of Babylon has defeated Israel, has absolutely defeated Israel. And to ensure that there is no resistance, they scoop up political, economic, military, and religious leaders and drag them back to Babylon where they will now live in exile. They will no longer be able to go to the places that they know and love. There will be people that they cannot see and connect with. Their movements will be restricted and they'd have no idea how long that is going to last. So it's no wonder that they cry out, we are wasting away. I can hardly even imagine what they felt like, their despair and their lament. I can hardly imagine what they were feeling. Actually, wait a minute. I think we all can sort of begin to understand what they were feeling. We know what it is like to have something feel like it is defeating us. We now live with a virus in this world and in this country that feels like it constantly is present and pushing us down and defeating us. We have a nation that has not handled it very well. So we know what it feels like to feel the power of something intruding in our lives. We know what it is like to feel that our movements are now restricted, that there are places we can't go or are afraid to go to. We know what it's like to not be able to always see people that we love and know. We know what it feels like in a way to live in exile, to live in a world right now where we are separate from places and people and things that we know. And so like God's people in Babylon, we too have a sense about what it feels like on occasion to waste away and to cry out. There are some days when I wake up and I am in awe of the way in which our world is managing to function with the possibilities and the creativity of people and our tenacity and our capacity to survive. And then there are other days when I wake up and I feel like I can't believe we're still here. I can't believe that this is still happening and still going on. And so there are days when I wake up and I feel, I feel empowered with some creativity, but there are days I wake up and I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted by what it takes to survive in this kind of world. And so sometimes, like the people of God in Babylon, I do cry out and I say, really, really? I feel like this is just unending. And I suspect I am not the only one attending worship today who has those days and has those moments when we just feel like we are living in a way, in a place of exile. What I want to hear when I feel like I'm in exile, and maybe you do as well, I, I want to hear a voice. <laughs> I want to hear a voice crying out in the midst of my feeling like I am wasting away. When I'm in the midst of the things that make me despair, I want to hear a clarion voice. In the ancient world, Communities had sentinels, people who literally stood higher above the town or the village, 
who kept their eye out above what was happening and out looking around to make sure that everything was okay. These people were incredibly important to those who lived in that town or village. They were people who were absolutely trustworthy and reliable, people that the village or the town knew that they could trust, that when they cried out and said, watch out, that they meant it. And when a sentinel who had their eye on the big picture cried out, watch out, lives were saved. That's the voice I want to hear right now, don't you? I want to hear those sentinel voices crying out, watch out. Part of what that voice is crying out and saying when it says watch out is something is happening that you don't want to have happen. But there's another way in which the sentinel voice is so powerful and strong because the sentinel says, watch, look and look out. Don't get caught in just what is happening within you or right here, but watch. Get your head up and look out. So when a sentinel says, watch out, that is to me a voice I want to hear. For the people of Israel in Babylon, they had a sentinel. The prophet Ezekiel was hauled off to Babylon with all of them. But he had a sentinel's voice, and he was able to steep his head up and his eye out beyond just that time of exile, beyond just the pain and the anger and the frustration and the sadness and the exhaustion of it. He was able to look up and out, and he was able to say, people of God, watch out and see what is strong and powerful and this sentinel's voice, when Ezekiel says, watch out, he is saying, God has not walked away. You are not abandoned in Babylon. You may be living in a time of exile, but God is right there with you. And out of this exile, something remarkable will happen. God does not create us and then walk away. God creates us, and no matter where we are, no matter what we're living with, no matter what exile you feel like you are in, God is right there with you, with me, with us. Ezekiel had that sentinel voice to cry out and say to God's people, watch, look, see, look up and out of the exile and see the power of God at work in your life. Hmm. Wow. That's the voice I want to hear, don't you? <laughs> That's the voice I want to hear. I want to hear the voice that says, watch up and out and recognize that this time of exile is not a time of despair. Frustrating, yeah. Difficult, you bet all of that, but it is not, it is not a time for us to believe or wonder if God is present. God is as present today as ever, helping us in this time be able to recognize the power of God and the power of God to do something amazing with us. God has been present through one pandemic after another from the very beginning of creation, and God will be present in this one as well. And so the sentinel voices in our world scream out, watch out and look for the presence of God because it is in that presence of God that we no longer have to feel that we are wasting away, that there is something potent happening here. So who are the sentinel voices that you can listen for who are the sentinel voices that you can allow yourself to hear to give you the strength and the power to rise up in the midst of this time of exile? But even more importantly, my sisters and brothers, it's time for us to be those sentinel voices. It's time for us to also rise up and know that God is with us and that God is calling us to stand up and to speak up, to woke up and to remind people 
no matter who you are, no matter where you live, if you're a tax collector or a Gentile or you are living in exile, God does not abandon you, that God is absolutely present. We too are called to be sentinel voices, to stand up and to say, watch out. So will you do that? Will you join me in that? Patrick, unmute everybody. Her foot what? Is unmute right? everybody. Yes. All right, are you ready? Watch out. I want to hear that half of your voices. Out. You ready? Yes. Watch, yes. Out. Watch, out. Watch, out. Watch 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 out. Did you hear that? Did you hear the power of our voices together saying, watch out, so that when we do feel that we are living in a place of exile, we have each other's voices to be able to say, we are not living exiled from God, that God is present with us, powerfully present, helping us understand that nothing in life wastes away and that together we can find the voices that can rise up and say, watch, look, look out, and know that God is with you, God is with me, and God is with us together. May we be sentinels in a time of exile. Amen. And now I invite us to stand if you are able, no matter where you are, and let us, let us join in saying together the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, The prayers of the people are found in your service bulletin. Our Lord Jesus Christ promised that when we gather in his name, he is here among us. O oh Lord, make your pleasure, take your, you take pleasure in your people. May your church be a community of honesty and humility. Help us to love each other, especially when love is a challenge. We are gathered in your name. O oh Lord, you adorn the poor with victory. Be with the hungry and the oppressed. Comfort the grieving. Give peace to all whose lives have been upset by natural disaster and war. We are gathered in your name. O oh Lord, may people everywhere praise you for all your blessings. Remembering the 18th birthday of Corin Haney Savoy, the birthday of Inez Haney Dodson, the birthday of Glenda Jordan, all teachers and students, 12th birthday and 9th baptismal anniversary of Evelyn Rose Delano, 
and any others we may name at this time. Earth, birthday of Anna Karen Brown. 76th well, birthday of Valerie. Eight Mason. years ago, and now every year Glorious reaches out to And Diana. 11th wedding anniversary <laughs> of Nicholas and Donna. For beautiful <laughs> weather. And it, you know, in church, there's really close being home. We are gathered in your name. O oh Lord, your law is summarized, love your neighbor as yourself. Help us to love our neighbors so that we might do no wrong by anyone. We are gathered in your name. O oh Lord, may all those who now lament see the day when they shall sing to you a new song, a song of joy and praise. May those who weep dance for joy. May the anxious rest on their beds in peace. And may all know that it was you, Lord, who made this possible. And so we remember Lucy Marshall, Doris Hoy, Vince Marsiglia, Donna Cartwright, Janet Churchill, David Schneider, Shirley Nathan Pulliam, Waimea Dupree, Tony Creek, Mike Knudsen, Lib Shipley, Lillian Thomas, Celia Vismail, Ray Ziegler, Larry Brown, Sandra De Silva, Tiger Watts, Peter Griffin, John Davis, Young Sam, Michelle Haney Dodson, Kate Henshaw, Mary Warfield, Amanda Harris and Marilyn and Ben Smith, Adel House, Margaret Chateau, Gordon Bowmaker, Tom Cover, Kelsley Blackert, Jim Wright, Dan Chambers, 40 West Assistance and Referral Clients, Hope Harbor Partner Families, those affected by the coronavirus, and any others we name at this time. Mary's mom. Um, Jean Morris. Sean McDowell. Carol Connors. Kasten. We are gathered in your name. O oh Lord, care for the dead. May all who have died rest in your peace, remembering William D. Penn, Mildred Hawk, and any others we name at this time. Mom and Dad. And West. James William. We are gathered in your name. Accept our prayers. Loving God, through your Son, you gave us an example to love one another as he loved us. Give us the strength to continue working for your kingdom here on earth a kingdom of justice and peace, kindness and compassion, grace and mercy. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. God of all mercy. mercy. We so confess that, that we have sinned against true. you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, 
strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. 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 And now I want to invite each of you to grab something that is symbolic to you of what it means to be a learner or a teacher. If ever there was a year for us to have a robust gathering of prayers for those who teach and for those who learn, for those who make it even possible, it is this year. There's no question that we all are learners all the time and that our teachers are the smallest among us to the wisest among us and that we also are teachers, all of us, all the time. But what a complicated time now to do that with strength and power. And so today of all days, as we bless those of you who are going back to school, we're going to be praying some lengthy but robust prayers. So I hope that you find this a source of support and we'll put the prayers on the website uh, this coming week. So let us pray first. A prayer for pe parents teaching preschool kids at home. Dear Lord, we pray for preschool aged children this school year. We pray that they may not fall behind in learning important educational and social skills during this COVID-19 crisis. We pray for the mothers and fathers who have to work at home and keep their preschool child occupied, as well as trying to implement fun learning activities. Please give these mothers and fathers the energy they need to do both jobs. <laughs> Help them find the balance to get all their tasks done. We pray for creative energy for those who are trying to teach preschool lessons to their children. Please help them come up with ideas that will strengthen their relationship with their child, as well as giving them valuable skills for growth. We pray for connection and community for these parents so that they could come alongside one another in encouragement and share what they've learned and what they're struggling with. Most of all, Lord, remind them to depend on you for all things every day. Help these mothers and fathers to start their day with prayer, to look to you when they're exhausted and struggling to find the balance between parenting at home and working. Help them remember that they are parents to young children. They themselves are children of God. Let them find peace and rest in the comfort of your presence, O Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray these things. Amen. Amen. And this is a prayer for parents sending children to preschool or daycare. Lord, we know that some workers are not able to work from home, and as essential workers, they must go into a hospital, office, or store. Lord, first of all, we want to thank you for these parents who are going in to work at hospitals, medical offices, grocery stores, drug stores, superstores, gas stations, restaurants, janitors, repair people, government employees, first responders, and so on. Retail stores and so many other. Lord, we are thankful for their hard work and that we are able to go to these places because of the people willing to work there. We pray for protection over these people that the masks they wear would prevent them from being exposed to the virus. We pray for proper hygiene and caution to be taken by customers, clients, or patients that visit these places of work or business so that their precautions could protect those they come into contact with. And we pray generally that the spread of the virus would slow and the progress would be made toward a vaccine. We know that many of these workers must send their children to an outside daycare or preschool. We thank you that some of these care places and schools are open so that these parents have the opportunity to take their children there while they're away. We pray for safety over the preschool teachers and daycare workers, as well as the children who are attending there. Lord, please keep the children well and prevent them from passing the virus amongst each other or to their teachers and parents. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And now some back to school prayers for our elementary students. Dear Lord, we pray for the elementary students and teachers going back to schools this school year. 
We pray for their health and safety as classrooms and schools have been modified to allow for proper social distancing and hygiene. We pray for the janitorial, janitorial staff and cafeteria workers, as well as the office staff who are essential employees at schools that are open. We pray that you would keep them safe and protected from the virus. Please protect the families of the students and teachers as they return home each day. Please slow the spread of the virus so that it does not infect these families. Lord, we also pray for energy and rest for the students and teachers so that they will be able to plan their lessons and effectively teach all their students. Also, that the students would be able to learn and keep up with their lessons. We pray for their spiritual growth in your name, Jesus. Amen. Father God, we pray for the students who will be doing school virtually from home. We pray that they will have the resources they need to do schoolwork. And we pray for their parents, that they would be able to balance work and watch over the children as they try to be disciplined in live classroom time and the recorded lessons as well as additional homework. We pray for the teachers who have to switch to online learning formats, that they will be able to have the resources and technology training they need. Please give the teachers, students, and parents the patience they need for this new type of schooling that they can all work together to accomplish what needs to be done. We pray for kind reactions and gratitude for the work that is still able to be done. Thank you that you are sovereign over all things, Lord. Amen. Amen. And now a prayer for middle school students and teachers. Dear Lord, we pray for students who are transitioning from elementary school to middle school during this crazy time. We know that this is a hard transition for many children, even during the most normal of circumstances. We pray that middle school children will still be able to build social skills, making new friends and maintaining existing friendships. We pray that these students would have a solid community through their church, school, family, and friends. As challenging as this time will be for middle school students, we also realize the challenges that have arisen for middle school teachers. Lord, we thank you for these teachers who choose to spend their time nurturing middle school students. We know there are so many facets of teaching that expand outside the normal bounds of classroom teaching. We thank you that teachers can be a resource for students who may be struggling with non-academic conflicts. We pray for open communication between teachers, students, and parents. And we pray that teaching with new technology would not hinder the educational progress for teachers or students. We thank you that you provide for all of our needs, Lord, and we pray that both students and teachers would have the internet connection and technology they need to effectively learn and teach. We pray that this different school year would not discourage teachers, students, or parents. Please help them to look to you during certain times and uncertain times. Thank you, God. Amen. And now a back-to-school prayer for our high school students and teachers. Dear Jesus, we thank you for our high school students and our high school teachers. Some of these students are nearing the end of their secondary education and will advance toward higher education or jobs in the workforce. So we pray for a good start to secondary education for some and a good end to secondary education for others. We pray for self-discipline for the students who are completing virtual classroom time and classwork as well as for the students going into classrooms or even splitting time between both. Please keep the students, teachers, and staff safe when they are communing together in one building. We pray for their health and for the right precautions to be taken to ensure their well-being. Lord, we pray for the high school teachers who have to learn new technology or attain new resources to be able to teach their students. Please give them parent advocates, and other teacher friends who will support them and help them. We also pray that these students will have respect for their teachers and be patient with all the changes rolling out. We know that this will be a challenging school year for students, teachers, and parents with many adjustments. Father God, please settle all the hearts that are worrying right now and bring peace to the hearts that are restless or fearful of the future. 
Holy Spirit, remind these believing teachers and students that they can depend on you for all things through all circumstances. Help them to remember they are not alone. Additionally, we pray that you would help these high school students to find the balance between social interaction, rest, learning, preparing for the future, and spiritual growth. Please bless them with godly friends and teachers. Bring alongside them adults who care about their futures and seek to encourage them in their choices and options. We pray that all these students, parents, and teachers will draw closer to you in this uncertain time. And we pray that they will seek your purpose in all they do. In your name, Jesus, amen. Amen. And now a prayer for our college students. Lord, we pray for the many college students returning to colleges and universities across the country, whether in person or virtually. We know these students are trying to get degrees so they can eventually have a job or trade in the workforce and support themselves. So we know it can feel overwhelming when plans change or seem to be delayed. Not only does this cause stress and fear over the future for students, but it can cause stress for parents as well, especially financially. Please come alongside these parents and college students to reassure them of your presence and peace. Remind them through your word that though things may not go the way we plan or even hope, there is purpose in everything because you are sovereign over all and you work through all circumstances. Help us to rely on you for all of our concerns, whether they are financial, academic, spiritual, or whatever. May this year be a year of growth for all of us, Lord, but especially our college students as they make decisions that will impact their future. Please grant these students the self-discipline to complete their classwork through virtual means and safety when they come in contact with other students for study or community. We pray that these students would not disregard precautions that need to be taken out of a false sense of security. We also pray that our students would not be fearful. Rather, we pray that they would be hopeful about the future and that they would be content with what they currently have and the direction they are heading in. Help us to think of others more than we think of ourselves. Help us to look to you, God, above all things. And may our troubled minds rest on the things above and find joy in your steadfast love for us. In your name, above all names, Jesus. Amen. Amen. And so, Lord, thank you for hearing the prayers on our lips and the prayers in our hearts. May we seek to trust you more and more each day for all things at all times in all our ways. You never change, God. You are the same yesterday and today and tomorrow. Help us to draw comfort from your sovereign presence and loving nearness. Thank you for who you are, our almighty and wonderful triune God, our Savior and Prince of Peace, our everlasting Father and Holy Spirit within us. Thank you for all the blessings you have given us and help us not to overlook them in times of struggle and strife. Amen. Amen. <laughs> okay. Fortified for a new school year, I hope. And now let us greet one another. My sisters and my brothers, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And and also you. with you. Also with you. Also with you. Peace to the Lord. Be all the Hi, everybody. Peace, 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 Alex. Hi. Hi, 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 Peace with you. Peace with you. Peace, Wendy. Peace, peace, Gloria. Peace, Tom and Daphne. David and Diane. Peace, everybody. Peace to everybody. Karen Brown. Peace, everyone. Hi, Kathy. Peace, honey. Peace. Mom, love you. My background. You're in Disney. I'm in Disney, yes. Peace, everybody. Hi, everybody. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. How wonderful to hear you greeting each other and uh, just exchanging the peace. And now as we move into our meal, I want to remind you all that we share the agape meal, this early church wonderful meal. 
And I invite you to make sure you might have something to eat and something to drink nearby so that we can indeed continue to be a community even as we share a meal um, in this manner. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. All thanks and praise are yours at all times and in all places, our true and loving God. Through Jesus Christ, your eternal word, the wisdom from on high by whom you created all things, you laid the foundation of the world and enclosed the sea when it burst out from the womb. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. Wondrous are you, Holy One of Blessing. All you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so, as the morning stars sing your praises, we join the heavenly beings and all creation as we sing with joy. creator of all. Your word has never been silent. You called a people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace, you gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign and give himself for us a fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, you have freed us from sin, brought us into your life, reconciled us to you, and restored us to the glory you intend for us. We thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends and said, drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so, remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection and ascension, longing for Christ's coming in glory, and presenting to you these gifts, your earth has formed, <coughs> excuse me, and whom in ha hands have made, we acclaim you, O Christ. Dying, you restored our death. Rising, you restored our life. Christ Jesus, come in glory. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be to us the body and blood of your Christ. Grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. 
giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ. And in the fullness of time, gather us with blessed Bartholomew and all your people into the joy of our true eternal home through Christ and with Christ and in Christ. By the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and creator, in voices of unending praise. Blessed are you now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father in heaven, be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! And now I invite us to do prayers over the meal that you have in front of you. So let's pray over whatever it is that you will be eating together. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God. You bring forth bread from the earth and make the risen Lord to be for us the bread of life. Grant that we who daily seek the bread which sustains our bodies may also hunger for the food of everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now a prayer over whatever it is you have that you might want to drink. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, creator of the fruit of the vine. Grant that we who share this drink, which gladdens our hearts, may share forever the new life of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And as we share this wonderful meal, I invite you to make sure, if you can, that you're that you're in gallery view so that you can enjoy being blessed by watching all of us as we share a meal together. And now, if you'll join me in the post-communion prayer. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection, and I await your coming in glory. 
And since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me, in this life and in the life to come. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge of love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer, be with you this day and forever. Amen. As we go forth into the world, refreshed and renewed, we reaffirm our commitment to our vision and mission as a congregation. We will, with God's help, be a vibrant faith community that is a blazing beacon of God's transforming love in the world. God is calling us to take righteous risks. We accept this call and will respond by seeking and serving Christ in all people. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth to love and serve the Lord.